Got my first real six string Bought it out the five and dime Played it till my fingers bled it was the summer of 69 everybody welcome back to esoteric atlanta i know you guys are gonna be super excited because doug i think you have now become the new channel favorite <laughs> i don't know about that bryce so just don't get don't give me a goal i can't attain here man I have gotten such a positive response. I, I You're such a really? breath of fresh air. I even had some people, because we we spoke about, you guys, if you're happen, happening to tune in and you missed the first episode with Doug, I will link that in the description box below. But I had so many people, Doug, who were following you. And then I guess when you got bumped off of YouTube, like lost track of you, and we're yes. just so excited that they found you again because awesome. they were so fascinated by, again, by your perspective. And I, once again, guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you Doug's channel. Um, Doug is a warrior like all of us. He has been bumped off and bumped off and struck and struck and struck, but he just keeps keeps coming back. It's dazed but not confused on YouTube, and you're on Rumble and BitChute right as well, Doug. Is that correct? Yes, correct, Bryce. So again, I will say for those of you that are in this corner of the internet with us, you know the struggles that we face that you guys also face on social media platforms. So please make sure you just go ahead over to Rumble and BitChute and subscribe to Doug's backup channels. My backup channel is on Rumble. In case something were to happen, you can then go check out those backout chan backup channels to know what happened so you we don't lose communication with you guys. And so Doug, I wanted to actually, let me pull this up again because I wanted to specifically kind of have a casual conversation because I want people to go to your channel. You did a whole series, two seasons worth of Raised in a Secret Society, and they were fabulous. And I told you guys, I think I told you guys that this is maybe I don't know if I said this on camera or off camera, but I'll say it again. Regardless, my boyfriend who Doug has met, it has been awake for about 20 over 20 years now. And he's very particular about who he listens to because he's run across a lot of junk conspiracy stuff. And when I was telling him about Doug's channel, he was really hesitant at first because, you know, he's been awake for so long. We were in the kitchen and I just started playing your summer of psyops, which I believe is in season two. And all of a sudden my boyfriend was like, who is this? And I said, it's Doug, the guy I was telling you about. And he goes, oh my God, this is fantastic. His research awesome. is fantastic. So I understand why you're bumped off, Doug. I, I get that. You're you're too over the target. And you also brought up something that even he had never heard of, which is the process church. Um, and so, guys, I really want you to go listen to his Secret Society series. But where do you want to start with this, Doug? Because you made so many connections with the MK Ultra, with all these things going on behind the scenes right that's such a big topic and just to let people know like i've gone into because it's so much to cover i there are some videos uh maybe i can give them to you to even link bryce or something because sure. i can't remember sure. them all but there's two on the called the summer of psyops manson son of sam and scientology and then there's one about the history of l ron hubbard um MK Ultra and global mind control. That's another like two hours just breaking down everything from the beginning to Hubbard to the process connections, etc. <laughs> Basically, it kicks off with the 60s, I would say. 
because these cults um, that were forming in San Francisco and L.A. and stuff, I believe that they were either created by intelligence agencies or studied by them to eventually apply this to the global scale like we're seeing today. So um, I don't know where to start, but I'm saying we got two of those videos uh, on the series and then the one on the background. If people want to check that out to get the whole deep dive and then maybe we can do a summary in this video. But I'm just saying there's a ton of information on this, Bryce. And then another one is called... Um, was a live stream that I did for another two and a half hours about the same information. But where do you want to start? Like I said, to me, it sort of kicks off. I mean, where do you want to take it back? Because it probably goes back forever. But in the 60s in particular, I think that technology had come far enough where they, whoever the hell they are, because everybody has their different opinions, right? But one, I think there is a they, whether they work unconsciously or consciously together. I mean, we only have to look at the World Economic Forum and the Bohemian Grove to know that, you know, powerful and rich people do get together and they do plan. And of course they would. Why the hell wouldn't you, man? I mean, you'd want to hold on to your power and shit. Um, so but to me, it seems like the uh, the 60s might be a good place to, to start it, because I think that it was planned to actually um, learn how to hack into the human mind, you know, uh, not least through the cult that I was born into Scientology, which is an expert at that. And then basically apply that to the world and take it over. Yes. And I will say, I'm going to say this um, on camera for you guys, um, especially if you're new to these topics. This is all stemming from Satanism or Luciferianism. And again, the darkness can't create anything, only the light can. So a lot of these practices with like mind control are coming from like legit things that are supposed to be used to help people release yeah. and, and control their own mind, but inverted it puts people into like a delirious state where they're not even aware of their own consciousness. And I will say this for anybody watching that does not believe in Satanism or Luciferianism, that doesn't matter if you believe in them or not. The point is they do the, the pervial, they, the controllers of this world do believe in it. And so um, you only need to look at pictures of Rothschild's Christmas parties to see what's really going on. Um, and so they're, they're not, they don't think that they, uh, if you guys go to the rumble page and, and look at the last episode I did with Tamara, she reads the whole agenda out word by word. And I'll send that to you, Doug, so you can hear the whole, sure, I'd love to hear that. Um, and they do not see us as human beings. They see us as vermin and we are theirs to control and they are the elite. And so it doesn't matter again, if you don't believe in this shit, they do. And they learned how to kind of disassociate the human mind in yeah. ways that we still are trying to understand as the common folk. Yeah. And why don't so we know that L. Ron Hubbard has a very shady past, correct? Mm -hmm. And um, Some, Going mm -hmm. Clear kind of goes, I rewatched Going Clear the other day. They, they go Good into movie. his. Yeah, they do a little past, bit for about they? 10 minutes. They, yeah. they, they cover about 10 minutes on the occult part he was really into occultism and again occult just means hidden it, there's good occult there's bad occult but the point is he jack parsons he was studying alex alistair crawley's work um and so there's already an indication that he was not doing things for the betterment of humanity and his son even spoke out didn't he doc his oldest son yeah, yeah nibs is his name's Ronald the Wolf, and he's also known as Nibs. And he is the he's featured in some of that series. He is the one that will actually has the most insight about that area. And this was his freaking son. And he talked about how his father was doing everything from abortion rituals uh, at the home where he walked in on one and, you know, saw Hubbard sitting on his wife, pulling out the baby as part of a black magic ritual. Oh. He was completely looped into this uh, occult circle. And a lot of the authors that he ran with, that was, they kind of overlapped. You know, yeah. Hubbard was right in the heart of this. Just backing up. So in the um, in the 1946, I believe it was, uh, mid to later uh, 40s, he wound up at Jack Parsons house for reasons unbeknownst, right? He just magically, if you ask Scientology, since they can't deny this part, they say that he was sent in to, Blake, to break up a black magic ring of Jack Parsons. And then, which isn't true. And then on the other side, when you're when you're out, um, it's 
it's Will Hubbard went in there because he was a black magician and and he stole Parsons' girlfriend. And there's a whole story about how he took off with his girlfriend and robbed Parsons of some money, et cetera. I think that Hubbard was an intelligence asset and that Scientology is an off book um, intelligence agency. Hubbard was able to go around wearing different disguises. He took his cult to the ship in 1967 and formed the Sea Org. He um, was called out for being CIA in various ports. In other words, they moved, he moved around yeah. and avoided the law in a way that I believe is only possible if you are working undercover, so to speak, and, and that Scientology is basically a front. It's not just a fake religion or a business um, model masquerading as a religion. I think it's about intelligence gathering. It's about getting, it's like Epstein in a certain way, where this is why they have the John Travolta's and the Tom Cruise's and a lot of Hollywood stars and politicians and stuff, because in their auditing that they do, they keep files um, on these people and they're an incredible intelligence gathering agency. And if you try to expose them or go against them, they use that to crush people. They invaded, They um, there was something called Operation Snow White where in the late seventies to early eighties, they did the highest espionage um, ever in the US by breaking into various government offices, et cetera. And even though they were tried for that and 11 top members went to jail, including Mary Sue Hubbard, which was Hub Hubbard's um, wife, Hubbard was never indicted. He went into hiding. And you think that something like that would be enough to shut down the cult, but apparently not because um, this is uh, just a long story short, Bryce. I believe that they're protected. I don't think it's just some Nexium cult or whatever where you know you can take them down easily. There's many reasons, not least Operation Snow White, where the government would have shut something like that yeah. down. In fact, they claim that their um, their CIA branch, their investigation, intelligence gathering and dirty tricks department, which was run by ex-Scientology hero Mike Rinder for 22 years, is the they said the CIA said their intelligence gathering apparatus is far more advanced than our own here wow. in America. So that just gives you some idea of. You know, you can never find the smoking gun. I've been looking forever on, you know, was Hubbard fucking CIA an intelligence asset or not? You can't, you know, were the were his um, documents in the military sheep dipped or not? You, I don't fucking know, man. You can't find find it out, which is a huge red flag in itself. But when you put all the dots together, there's enough information where no matter what the fuck it actually is, it's clearly being protected, maybe from the beginning. Harper was able to somehow dodge, you know, prison his entire life. And even though he was hiding out in Creston, California, it wouldn't have been too hard to figure um, mm -hmm. figure that out and grab yeah. him. So there's so much sus around Scientology, not least the fact that it's still here today, human trafficking, brainwashing people. Um, and they still got their celebrities and their politicians. They're amazing at safe pointing people to get the LAPD, the Clearwater the Police Department, et cetera, in their pocket. They're just an incredible uh in uh in, intelligence gathering agency yeah. they do get, get to they kind of like that the church the, the christian church they do seem to get away with a lot and when the fire is on them when the heat is on them like the church they will throw somebody to the wolves to make people happy like danny masterson they'll you know they, exactly. they, they have no problem there's no loyalty amongst thieves they have no problem through sacrificing one of their own and um it's it's wild you know it's wild to think that it grew because if you look at other religions which i personally my personal opinion believe all religions are a psyop that literally it's made to divide us and that it's man -made. there goes all your christian audience I, um, well, i've already lost them because i did the missing books of the bible so <laughs> okay okay so it's fine Just it's fine um all but, but that's a good point so that's a cult right when you can't handle criticism when you have to disconnect from criticism or questions then you're under some form of mind control right the yeah, truth I would say so. stand up to criticism the truth can stand up to questioning a lie can't and um we uh, it's it just it's what's so phenomenal in my opinion about scientology because as you guys know on this channel i'm a nerd i deep dive everything I'm sorry if you guys hear the the mowers outside. They just got really loud. But if, if you barely hear them, okay, good. Um, if someone wants, doesn't want to speak, and um, if you deep dive these other religions, it takes a while for them to amass the power 
that Scientology amassed in one lifetime. How is that? You can't just say it's because they're tax exempt. Yes, that, that cushions them. It gives them a benefit. But how did they amass this much money, this much power in this short amount of time? Now, the logical person who is not brainwashed yet can look at their prices and think, God, that's too expensive. I'm going to say no. But Doug, once you get under the, I think I heard you say once, and I think this is accurate, the black magic spell. that Yeah, Hubbard it's literally a in. hypnotic spell. Hubbard was first and foremost, not only an occultist, but he was a master hypnotist. It's really like coming out of a spell. Yeah. So he trains people to, to this. These are good people, just like Doug is, that get brainwashed themselves. And once you're in that state, you'll do anything to find the money, won't you? Yeah. And they make, you know, people have mortgaged their houses. I racked up credit cards. It's like being on crack. It's like being addicted to drugs. You'll do anything for those hypnosis highs. You once you believe in that and they have a very sophisticated way to do so, once you get in there. Because, Bryce, they had to beat me down. I mean, I was born into this shit. My dad got into it when I was nine. I knew evil entered our house through my father, man. That's how I describe it. So I was weary for up until my 20s. It was only through a series of being, like I told you in the last interview, my parents would sit me down when I'd have a problem and they'd get me to offload. And they'd say, do you want to be punished for an exorbitant amount of time or do you want to take a two-week course at Scientology that we'll pay for? And eventually I just kept doing that, you know, because I was always getting in trouble and bit by bit, some of their stuff made sense. But in particular, it was the auditing, which is where they use your guided imagination under a trance state, under hypnotism to get you to contact past lives and stuff. I'm not saying I don't believe in that necessarily. I'm just saying that what they do is they implant false memories and they change your whole timeline. I mean, they change your whole reality in these auditing right. sessions. So, um, but there's, and you dissociate, but that also can give you the high. So they reframe dissociation as exteriorization. The whole goal in the cult that they tell you is to try to get outside of your body. You're a spiritual being. You're not your body, your mind, your thoughts, et cetera. Okay, fair enough. But then you dissociate, which is not leading towards anything like spiritual freedom. It's the opposite. They implant false memories, and then they take each of these dissociation sessions up to what they call a floating needle on their little device. In other words, it literally registers when you've dissociated and you have a high. Um, you do feel like you're, because you're so desensitized after a while, you do remove yourself more and more from your body and being grounded and reality. And it feels like you accept the explanation that I'm going exterior or I'm going out of my body while you're actually going insane and you're having this man's mind implanted into your step by step. And it does, and we're not dumb, Bryce. It's like, you know, and also there's the argument that only 5% can be, you know, hypnotized, man, if you're in this world and you you can't not be. I mean, it's so right. arrogant to exactly. think that you're going to pop out of the womb, have all your belief systems accurate with the bombardment of programming from the education system, you know, right when you pop out of the womb to the television to, you know, you got religions that you could buy into. There's like, how are you going to know until you grow up and assess things yourself that you do have things right? Because you're not going to, it's pretty arrogant to think that you're going to pop out of the womb. You'd never be susceptible to any kind of fake belief system or mind control when that's impossible in this world, you know? Absolutely. And pride cometh before the fall. Yeah. Part, part of spirituality is being humble. And you're so right yeah. Doc, because that's the nugget. Like that's the foundation of, of spirituality. And in Sanskrit, it's called Prakriti Purusha Ishvara. These are the Sanskrit. Prakriti is nature. Purusha is the soul and Ishvara is God or higher consciousness. And basically like in the yoga sutras, 5,000 year old text, Patanjali basically says that man's suffering comes from the fact that man thinks who he thinks he is, is not really who he is because he's a yeah. soul having a human experience and he gets attached to being human. And that's what causes the, the, cause the, cause the laws of property is that everything in property has a birth, a life and a death. And because it has that cycle, it's constantly in states of change. You know, and so because it's constantly changing, it causes the friction that makes us suffer because, but the soul's not. Now, that's exactly what Scientology is saying, too. However, this is where it changes. We are here. I am Bryce. I'm in this experience of Bryce right now. Doug is in his experience of Doug. You guys are all in your experiences because that's what you need to refine your soul. So even though you're not your body, your body is the greatest asset that you have in helping you explore yourself. 
And so even though in, in the Eastern text, we say, yeah, your thoughts are not your thoughts. They're part of the at- attachment to the false sense of reality or Maya. When you start to understand and li- that nervous system, that emotional center is how that's the tool that your soul uses to refine itself. So you don't try to get rid of them. You instead, you lean into them. And what starts to happen too, is when you learn that your thoughts are not, you know, your emotions are just your thoughts. You're able to conduct yourself better and more peacefully with other people. You can, you don't have to live in that reality that your emotions are super real. They're real to you. And so you get to explore that. And from the Eastern philosophies perspective, that's it. There's no magic. There's no bridge to climb. There's no, you just practice that observing yourself, observing yourself, the physical yoga practice, the asanas are meant to be uncomfortable because it's triggering your mind so you can observe. So you can observe. So I say to people, you can apply that to any exercise as a foundation. Now, like Sri Swami Chittananda says in the Yoga Sutras, that when you realize that, what tends to happen is your compassion and your empathy grows for everyone because you know yeah. how hard it is. You know, suffering is suffering is very real. It's very real. And so instead of disconnecting, disconnecting from the experience of being Doug or Bryce or whoever you are watching right now, you're supposed to come deeper into it, right? And, yes. and that's where I think it changes. And I know, Doug, we, we spoke about past life stuff before. I know Scientology is big on past lives. And I was telling you, like, I loved what you had to say about past lives because I do believe in past lives. However, they're not important. You're not supposed to remember because that's just an ego trap. You need to be here now, not there then. Does that make sense? Do you want to touch on that? Like, like to see how they use this black magic to get you caught almost in this trap. Do you want to talk about, hit on that a little bit? Sure. I mean, when you say black magic, to me, it just seems like, like Scientology doesn't um, believe in God or any higher power. You are God. They're like Nibs, you know, L. Ron Hubbard's son said that, L. Ron Hubbard was a God maker. He's telling you like the ultimate ego trip, like the ultimate, um, I don't want to speak for all Satanists or whatever. And there's many different branches. I can already see like the comments filling up. That's not what Crowley meant and all this fucking Crowley apologist and shit. Um, so I'm not an expert. I'm just saying that um, when it comes to the black magic part, um, which Hubbard was an adherent of and Scientology's 95% ripped off from straight from Crowley. Now I understand that he waters it down and he changes it and it's not, you know, original to Crowley or whatever, but Crowley was not a nice guy either, man. I love it when people say like, well, you just haven't read the text on this. And it's like, dude, the guy was not a compassionate, like good right. guy, you no, know? Wasn't. Um, sorry. I just want to get that out of the way. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm not an expert on Satanism, but when it comes to, you know, talking about this shit, a lot of people come back and say that, you know, well, you don't understand Crowley because you're, you're taking Hubbard's version of, okay, fair enough. But the idea that I understand from Crowley and from Hubbard and their like is that you're boosting the shit out of your ego. You don't have to, um, you don't have to like find out what the truth is. It's what you make it. In other words, like Scientology is all about, and this is what the new age can, which it might be a little bit true, but I think you can get well, sidelined. I will is you say, create so your they, own reality. You make the it new whatever age, you want. They, the, the CIA got involved in that as well. And so yeah, I think that they created it. I try to warn people because you see this on YouTube, all these people channeling spirits and talking. Yeah. About, that's bullshit. That's corruption of what the text like my like. My teacher in India would be like, D- why are you doing that? Like, no, focus on you, your spirituality, you guys. I do believe channeling is real. I know people can do that, but it's communication. It's not spirituality. Spirituality is focusing on your own spirit, honing in your own. So yeah, that like the new agey, what they did is they took, that's the inversion, right? They took this teaching that's like, it's you, boo. Like it's all you. You exactly. And they come over here and say, yes, it's you, but it's you and your past lives and it's you and your sexuality and it's the twin flames and it's the all. Yeah. They, they bring you into the world of illusion even deeper instead of using the world yeah. of illusion as as a teaching mechanism for yourself. They're using it as as like a bait. Right. To blow you. Yeah. Up. I get what you're saying. With, and Crowley, he treated woman women like shit. He was like raping women and a, I mean, it was awful the what he was he doing. Flat out said he wanted to be the most debaucherous man because in that philosophy, 
it's about having no limits. It's right. about giving the middle finger to God. Now I don't do religion and I, you know, my, my version of God would probably not be from the Bible or something, but same. I don't know. I definitely believe there's more than the five senses. Let's just leave it at that. But um, they do take something that I think is true at its core. And then, like you said, just like in Satanism, they invert everything. They flip truth completely on its head. So I've always had like a continuity feeling. That's all I needed to know. As a, Even as a kid, I always felt like there's something more. And Scientology and these new age cults are perfect. Because if you don't like society and you don't want to work the nine to fiver, something like Scientology is waiting for dreamers to come along yeah. to just thrash their minds and take good concepts and twist them on their on their head and put you into a trap where he Hubbard tells you you're breaking out of the matrix while he's putting you in an even smaller matrix within the matrix if that makes sense oh yeah you become an asset you become part of the psyop yeah, literally it, an asset it, it absolutely it absolutely makes sense because people who seek out spiritual knowledge are usually seekers they usually have figured out something doesn't feel right. And so they're trying to make sense of the world around them. And mm -hmm. I think what people fail to understand, and I think that the controllers have done a good job at this, is that when you are on a truth, truly with a, 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 a pretty pure teaching where there's no nefarious stuff going on, it's going to, first of all, you're not going to have, there's going to be boundaries. Like you're not going to be able to cling to your teacher forever. Like you're going to have to go sit by yourself and cry in a corner sometimes. Right. And it's not going to be comfortable. Like people get into this, like love and light, love and light. I'm like, that is the, that is the least spiritual thing you can say. Spirituality is a lot of darkness. Mm -hmm. It's facing your own shadow side. And so I think people in their, in their need for relief to understand that they, they seek this, like, like you said, the hypnotic release, the drug, almost that, like, I, I feel good now. Like, I feel right. good. I can live my life because I'm being filled. The ego is is soothed now, right? And 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 in a true spiritual teaching, they're not going to. You're gonna need to. You're gonna need to cry in the corner. You're gonna need yeah. to like, face your own self. And um, you know, it, it's it's and there's no smoke and mirrors there's no e-meters there's no magic yeah. there's no mala beads that are going to like rescue you it is the most raw human non-escape situation you can be in and, and a lot of people can't a lot of people can't handle that and so they run into these false spiritual circles because they don't want to feel even more even worse than they already feel um and so they go into these false spiritual circles and they end up being cults sometimes and and the the cabal the controllers they know this they know this and so there it's like shooting fish and it's like fishing what they, what's the saying shooting fish in a barrel yeah and it's because you have empathy it's like if you guys listen to day uh, to Doug's series with HG Tutor they don't give a shit they know you're empathetic and they know they're not and that's their superpower right. Yeah, their superpowers also that um like if I didn't have an experience with Scientology, I don't think I'd appreciate on a wider scale the scale of evil. One of the hardest things to come to terms with was is, is you know, yeah, they never do that. And it's like, no, you would never do that. But there are people that work in a very, very different way. And that's why I like talking to HD Tutor, because he give he gives it to he's a narcissistic psychopath that's supposedly self-aware. And he has a YouTube channel where he breaks this stuff down and man man like um that's the problem bryce because if i didn't have a personal the only good thing i got out of growing up in a cult like scientology is getting out and then under learning about well how deep the rabbit hole goes and, and that there really is evil that has um intentions that would scare the piss out of the average person it scared the shit out of me yeah. and like you said you know going through leaning into your emotions no one there to protect you I lost my fucking family, my acting career, my mind. I went homeless. And the whole time I'm thinking, quote unquote, God, why in the fuck is this happening? I finally got a foot in the door in Hollywood. Bryce, I was guaranteed to have a career. I worked for 10 years to fucking suffering to get acting jobs. And I got enough on my resume where my life is set, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then as we talked about last time, a book was dropped off on my doorstep that changed all that. And it's been... I mean, I'm okay now. I have been for a couple of years. It's an indescribable experience what that decade was like coming out of the cult. I was alone. I had no one that could relate to what I was going through. And every day was a challenge just to get food and just to carry on. And the day before that, I was in a loving family, I thought. 
I had a spiritual leader in the way of L. Ron Hubbard, who I completely trusted, and my life was set. And I finally had a career that I worked my ass off for and that I really wanted to be an actor from a pure perspective. Not, I don't like, I don't want to be famous. I hate attention, but I'm just saying that was my purpose to express myself through acting. It was something I could do, right? So, man, like, no wonder. I mean, I could barely take it, Bryce. I wanted to suicide myself. I threatened to kill my parents. You know, they had to get a restraining order on me. This is just to give you some idea of the level of emotions that I didn't even know was in me that was shut down by right. Scientology. It makes you into a secondary sociopath, generally speaking. So when I came out and I'm on my own and I didn't have any crutches to lean on, that's when you find out what you're made of. And yeah. I wouldn't take that yeah. back for anything because I thought I was going to die every day. But on the other, you know, on the, it makes you let go of your little problems real quick. You yeah. know, all the things that people battle about, about the fucking low level shit about you're offending me. And, oh, this offends me. Motherfucker, you guys should like try a wake up experience. Your offending will go away. And, you know, at least if my experience is anything to go by, you get over the, the little worrisome problems that people bitch about all the time when your life is on the line to work out what the fuck happened to you. And I mean, I don't know how to put into words, although I try really hard, um, Bryce, to explain what that 10 years was like. It was like being, I was totally dissociated. It was like having to come to terms with not only all the problems that I went into Scientology for to handle were not fixed. I now had this new problem where I have to undo all this mind control my parents are now against me. I have no life skills because I was made so codependent on my cult leader and my parents. I was like a little baby, a little six-year-old when I woke up in my thirties. And it's like, to, and I had no knowledge um, of the real world. I was dumb as shit because all I studied was Scientology. So being in my thirties, you know, um, having my whole life fall apart, going homeless, not having a mind to work with, a parent to lean on, they were now my enemies. I mean, it just was... It's, it was so intense that um, I wanted to kill myself. And I'm like, there's there's no rhyme or reason why this is happening. Why the fuck is this happening? I did everything right in the, in my life. I, I followed what I believe was true. My parents told me it was true when I was growing up. I totally believed in it. It was really shocking, Bryce, to find out. I found out on day one after I read that book. I got on the internet after shaking for two hours about whether or not to look at this Scientology shit that's online because we're programmed. We're in deep shit if we do. So um, when I found out about the occult shit on day one, this was in such contradiction to the man. It's so well hidden in Scientology. I mean, he really seemed like a, a really helpful, beautiful, caring man, L. Ron Hubbard. I know that's going to sound funny to your listeners. When you're in there, so it was completely hidden and a shock to find out about all these occult aspects. And like I said, once I was like, so, and then what do you get for figuring that out? What do you get for being able to be snapped out of this? 10 years of living hell right. um, where you can't explain how you feel. Thank God I had an acting class to act this shit out. But like I just to bring this full circle, like it just makes me laugh at all the little bickering and the problems. And like I said, we're it feels like we're being more pushed to be careful with the words that we say and we can't offend anybody. It's like, fuck, man, anybody, your listeners that have been through this wake up oh, process, yeah. they'll yeah. know what I'm talking about. But you get over that shit quickly. And when you have when you're like when you have to take your life into your own hands, then you find out what you're made of. And that's the great gift where thank God I went through that. But I, I wouldn't want to go through it a second time, Bryce. That's why I've been so adamant on studying this shit and trying to find out how the trick was done in the first place. Cause I uh, I refuse to join a second cult, man. I'm always on guard for that. And that happens a lot. People will all the time. They'll hop from one cult to the next one. Um, I've noticed um, it's interesting you're saying that because I've heard you tell your story. And honestly, like when I, my heart like sinks every time, because I cannot imagine what you went through. It's OK, like, man. I'm on I the other cannot, side of it. Thanks, like, though. It's it OK. So, Other people have been through through much worse, man. It's no I big know, deal. But it is like the fact. But that's just a testament to how strong your soul actually is that you did pull through and you did. I don't it. feel like I had a choice though. I hate it when people say well, that though. Did. Like, have I didn't you have courage. Have I was scared shitless. I didn't have a choice. Like I told you, I threatened to kill my parents. I was really triggered all the time. I wasn't a good person to be around both in Scientology and especially when I was getting out. Cause it's all I talk with about my parents. Like 
my life was a mess. So I don't feel like I had courage or anything. I just got forced into that position. That's why I was bitching and scared the whole time. I well, was, you know, it, wasn't, it's it wasn't courage, man. It's it interesting. Well, courage is, they say courage is the, when we act, when we're scared, but we act, we still continue to move forward. So I yeah. think you were, well, I had crazy. to, so I guess it was, it was literally, and what am I, cause the alternative, I mean, every day was a survival for years. Right. So the alternative, what, what I'm, I mean, I just got thrust into that situation, which like I said, Bryce, I realized now was a great gift, not really of my own doing, maybe it was meant to be or whatever, or maybe I got lucky. But I certainly didn't feel courageous and it scared the shit out of me. That's why. But it also made me face my fears. Like I definitely um, it definitely toughened me up. And like I said, the little petty stuff that a lot of people get involved in just goes over me like water off a duck's back. Yeah. And, and it definitely made me um, pretty fearless, to be honest with you. Like I don't I wouldn't be able to do the kind of shit, you know, YouTube can break you, you know, in terms of the comments and fucking literally break you by trying to push you, you off the platform if you fucking talk out about this shit so i got over that it did get me over a lot of fear you know and um like i would have fear if someone put a gun to my head and they're threatening to kill me it's not like i'm totally without fear that's a natural response but i'm not afraid of dying man because i already died a long time ago you know i really that's, did and that was a that's a greek pro proverb actually and i can't remember exactly how oh, it goes, really? but the, the trick about life is to die before you die I totally understand that. Yeah, I literally felt like I, I. Maybe that's where they get the, the born again or something. Like I said, I yeah. don't do religion, but maybe you die to your old self. Like something happened where, I definitely felt like I was dying, and then I died a long time ago. So the the thought of dying really doesn't, doesn't bother me. It's, it's no. what we call in, in modern terms. We call it an ego death. The right, right, died, right. And that can that be just sense. as painful. I went through an ego death in 2017. I spent two months straight, nothing like what you went through, just crying every day. But what I was doing was I, I was mourning my own mortality, the reality that I'm not, that Bryce is just an, a ride right now. And that, that one, you know, and it, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. And it doesn't mean that the ego, the fault sense of self isn't there. It's always going to be there when you're, while you're alive, but you understand sure. it more. And so you're sure. able to, release a little bit of that stuff through through sorrow it's not like you have this like lightning bolt in lightning experience where all of a sudden you you go through the mourning process and i can't imagine i mean like that to, to in one day to have your whole life just crumble it wasn't just your religion it was your career it was your family i cannot it would it would push anybody to the point of being in that survival mode. And so the fact that you kept going, you just kept going is, is truly a testament to your own, your own strength. And I'm sure a lot of people watching just, you know, a lot of people watching us, Doug are awake, like we are, and they have been like uninvited to Thanksgivings. They've been like cut off from friends just because they tried to point something out that seemed pretty obvious to all of us. And because it was so upsetting the reality of the situation was so upsetting that people didn't want to see it and then cut them off. And so I think a lot of people can commiserate on a smaller scale of having to like really know yourself through that experience of, um, of, of, of changing because you are starting to see that illusion and you're breaking. And that's the whole part of, of spirituality is seeing the truth through the illusion. That's it. That's the whole crux. That's There's no secret book you buy. There's no that's that's ot9 i guess we'll say <laughs> so, yeah. so for all the scientologists that happen to be watching don't waste your money <laughs> it doesn't even exist i mean it says that they go up to 15 on their bridge price but it only actually goes up to eight and they're told that if they build enough org organizations um they'll release nine and ten which hubbard never actually wrote apparently so they're waiting for yeah, nothing it's all a scam if you just yeah. read the Vedic text, they tell you all the secrets. Like it's all there. You just this is an illusion. You've got to see the truth through the illusion. That's it. There's no. That's it. That's the answer and the and the equation. You got to work that out for yourself. That's it. You know. Um. And and that's why I say, in my opinion, black magic. You know, I, I get frustrated, Doug, when people are like, "Oh, but just say in Jesus' name." I'm like, "Well, then you've never experienced real about black magic." Because it is, if you look at what happened with Scientology, with all these cases, the MK Ultra cases, it's so powerful. It ha it can it can it can take a hold. And listen, guys, I believe they don't want psychopaths. They want empathetic people that they can turn into pseudo psychopaths. But they right. can also feed off of that. They can't. 
a psychopath can't feed off of another psychopath. There's no right. light to feed off of. They need your light. They need right. that to sur for survival for themselves. Now, with uh, Charles Manson, let's let's kind of talk about him briefly because sure. he's one of the more recognizable names in um, more of our modern our modern uh, true crime um, psyop um, genre. And what was fascinating? Now, I had heard prior to your series that there was talk about him being in Scientology, but a lot of people dismissed it. But in your series, you kind of proved that he was a part that there was a, there, whether he was an MK ultra kid, that Scientology actually did play heavy into his psyche. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and what you kind of found with Manson? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you've read Tom O'Neill's book and your listeners will have, you know, about chaos. And then we have Ed Sanders' book, The Family, which goes into a lot of this and even ties it into some of the Son of Sam stuff. And then there's the um, Dave McGowan's work, you know, which goes into this program to kill. And then if you read uh, Weird Scenes Inside the Canyon, that's the Laurel Canyon scene where I live. I live um, on Coldwater Canyon, one street over. Um Again, we're back to the 60s that we talked about at the very beginning, Bryce, and that's when the New Age cults, um, like the process, like the Esalon Institute, like Charles Manson, they were all kicking off here in San Francisco and in Laurel Canyon, Los Angeles. Yeah. And I think that they were being created and studied by the intelligence agencies, like I said, to do a global version of this. And I thought we had the ultimate opportunity to suss that in the last three years, but apparently that people still are figuring it the fuck out but anyways um manson was definitely into scientology now he stole everything he was kind of like a hubbardite where hubbard didn't just do black magic that's where he kicked off he got into he got into alistair crowley's uh work via the book of the law that was the first book that he read when he was 15 some say 16 and that's what kicked off his um whole basic philosophy but then he stole everything like nlp hypnotism and a million other things right so Manson did the same thing. He was a pimp, you know, he got schooled, I, I would imagine, in prison, had to defend himself because he was a short guy getting raped and beat up all the time, you know, at Boys Town. That, that yeah. sets up his trauma. So I think he was an asset. Again, if you read Tom O'Neill's book, and I think he's doing a part two, um, and just going deeper into this, I think he was used as an asset, as a scapegoat. Um, his role, you know, that he ultimately played in the Sharon Tate LaBianca murders, is a whole conspiracy in, it, in itself. Some people think the murders didn't happen. Some people think it was a drug deal gone bad. Some people think it was a hit by the process that Manson was a member of. So I don't know, man. I don't know if anybody really knows exactly what happened, but there's a million theories. But I for sure think that he was an asset. He was programmed to program others. And a big part of that where he really fucking saw the benefit and how he could do that was Scientology because he had... 150 hours of auditing which is what i told you earlier bryce where you you know you're on the soup can and then you had the the needle or whatever now when he was in prison um he first started getting auditing in the 50s and then again in well in the 50s when they when he was when it was in the prisons and he was doing it i would imagine they didn't have the e-meter in prison they had dianetics which is where you just sit across from another person. But he did 150 hours of this shit, of reframing his mind. He even said in one of his um, writings about how he realized how he could use Scientology to control people. That's what he liked about it. Plus, he also lost his mind, too, because he did something called overrunning in Scientology, which we don't have... I don't want to go into the whole breakdown of the nomenclature and, all, and what that means, but let's just say he Scientology, if you dissociate too much or you're not prepared for it, or you don't have a strong enough mind or whatever, you can go crazy in something called overrunning in one of these auditing sessions. And Manson had that happen where he said, get me the fuck away from my auditor. He didn't want to have anything to do with Scientology anymore, even though he was pimping it out um, quite a bit around the prisons. But he did take that philosophy. They, you know, had an e-meter on the fucking ranch when they, you know, when he was arrested. Bruce Davis was a Scientologist. Paul Watkins was, and many other members. It played a much bigger role than Scientology would want you to know. The, the PR line that they put out is Scientology was too crazy for Manson. I think Scientology might have put that out themselves to distance themselves from it. But if you, uh, I got, I even have some documentaries on my BitChute channel, like this six-parter on Manson. That's the. Oh, it doesn't go into the MK Ultra shit, but it, it's the best documentary ever made, and it was by 
Um, it's professionally done. And it, if you know what to look for, it covers the hate Ashbury medical clinic, you know, where Manson was taking the girls and shit, where some suggest some of his programming happened or where he got some ideas. Um, I mean, it ties into Lewis Jolly and West, who was an infamous MK ultra doctor who may have had a cursory handling with Manson who handled Patty Hearst and all the other people in that time that were dealing with cults and brainwashing. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm just rambling off the topic. So well, to answer your so question, said, he was said, quite involved in Scientology. It's funny. You said Patty Hearst. Um, I've been to the Hearst mansion in California and I mm -hmm. typically dig that stuff because I'm a history freak. I, that was the creepiest experience in my life. I will never forget that. I wanted off that property. It was so weird. But anyway, I, and if you and if you guys look in, in any of, of Manson's childhood, I mean, he had a horrific childhood. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It, it it definitely. You look at him, and you look at the MK Ultra mind control programs and the disassociation, the uh, Project Monarch. It it just seems like it just screams of this is CIA. Like this is not. Um, now, son of Sam, you were the person on your series. I, because I'm not as familiar with son of Sam as I am with like Charles Manson, but I I'm didn't... not an expert either, by the way. Well, I didn't realize. By, by the way, Bryce, was... I can't say too much, but let's just say there's some new stuff that came out where I'm actually going to work with somebody who we're going to do a series on son of Sam. Oh, I'm so excited. And all this wait. stuff. Yeah. Because I had no idea that there was. Well, I'm going to say there was more than one person. Now, the mainstream narrative says, no, it was just one person. But you brought up a lot of interesting evidence to point that it was the process church. It was connected. An offshoot, perhaps. An yeah. offshoot of it. Um, and then that the murder that happened in San Francisco, or was it? No, it was, um, my mind's gone blank now. The, co the famous college up there in North Yeah, North you're North. talking about what Stanford and Ar Stanford, the Arliss Perry it. murder? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was very ritualistic. And when... And, in the way that she was laid out in the church and what's mm -hmm. interesting too with man there what i don't know if it was on your channel or something else where he manson says that the t that t tate that she was laid out as a sacrifice again yeah that's possible there's all these different theories and i've spun my head around like looking at all of them it um I don't know what happened. And I think that anybody that claims that they actually do, I don't believe them, man, because it's too, there's no smoking gun. I mean, it could be everything from a drug hit to a ritual sacrifice. I do think Roman Polanski was heavily involved. Yeah, I do too. Manson, Manson was connected to the process. There's no doubt about that. There's plenty of evidence. And, he, you know, it doesn't prove anything, but just as a little aside, there was two process members that visited Manson in, um, in prison, you know, after he was imprisoned. And he has gone out of his way to kind of distance himself from that. There's a quote where he's, he was asked about Robert de Grimstead, who's the, first of all, real quick on the process, in case your listeners don't know, they probably do, but it's a splinter group or an offshoot of Scientology. And it was formed by Robert de Grimstead and Marianne McLean, who were high level Scientologists. They met at the cult. And then like a lot of narcissists or psychopaths, they like Keith Raniere, they recognize something good in Scientology, like Manson, yeah. and they use it to form their own cult because they recognize that they have some very good control mechanisms. So they splintered off, I believe, in 1963. They formed the Process Church of the Final Judgment in England. They then went to Stool, which is a whole nother subplot. And they had chapters in San Francisco, of course, and they were on the same block as Charles Manson. In fact, Charles Manson would stay at their house with Process members. And he's you know, caught intertwining in the Laurel Canyon scene as well as at San Francisco with the process uh, since he first um, was released from prison. There's no doubt about it that he was connected to that group. And Scientology being the mother cult of all this has done fair gaming on Maury Terry, who talked out about, who tried to make connections with, um, he wrote The Ultimate Evil and he tried to make connections with, um, well, not tried to, he did, with Manson and the process. He got attacked and fair game and they had a file on maury terry to keep an eye on his ass scientology did everything they can to distance um themselves from manson um because it's it's more than just bad pr i mean if manson's getting his control techniques heavily influenced by scientology what the fuck does that say about scientology so they're kind of the mother cult that spawns everything from fucking dexium to, to the process and everything else
And then when it blows back on them, as we talked earlier, Bryce, they're such a sophisticated intelligence agency, intelligence gathering agency, that they can very easily muddy the waters, distance Manson from Scientology, distance themselves from the process, and still operate today um, by looking like they have no connections at all when their fingerprints are all over this shit. Yeah. It, and then you say my audience, I mean, the funny thing about the process church, you guys, like I said, my boyfriend knows the ins and outs of all these things. He had never heard of the process church. You got him on that. He never, it's heard totally, of that. by so, the way, I didn't come up with this information. It's been around forever. I'm not an expert on it. There's people that know this way better than I do, but it's, um, I guess it's, it's not, I'm just saying I didn't come up with this, Bryce. Like, no, I you know, know, I know, but it's, it's, it, 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 you blew his mind like that when we were watching your summer of psyops, you guys, I mean, just the connections that you make and you do it in such a very easy to follow way to show. And we ended up Thanks. watching That's what, what I was trying is, to do. There's a it documentary get... is it like sympathy for the devil, not the Rolling Stone song, but like, we watched it after we listened to your video because we were he was like, "What the hell is this?" And like we were, mm -hmm. it was the creepiest documentary, isn't like, it? Oh my god! I mean, the people still seem like they're a little bit, but the way they play it no, off, no, they are. They're like they're like indies. They're like a, a lot in the ex community, Bryce, ex Scientology, where they still believe in the tech. They still believe in it. In that do that documentary, by the way, guys, that Bryce is talking about. It's on my BitChute channel. If you want to check it out, it's called Sympathy for the Devil. And it was put out by the process cult itself. Yeah. Um, to dismiss the son of Sam stuff. It, it's a it's a it's like um it's a PR piece to distance yep. it from the son of Sam and from Manson and all this shit. And like you said, the people that were in that documentary, because it was a pro cult kind of, but it does expose some stuff. But again, just to bring it up and then dismiss it. Um, because it's made by the cult, they're still believers, man. Timothy Wiley, RIP, you know, he's in there. And um, all these people sound like, yeah, we're out of the cult. You know, we did some bad things, but hey, it wasn't that bad or whatever, you know? Yeah, they're young still kids, fucking true young believers. and dumb. It was the, yeah, you know, kind of how they LOL, like we were just, I know we, we weren't like, sacrificing people and shit like that. Oh, that dog blood stuff. And yeah, you can really like hear them oversell the idea. And yes. some of these people, Bryce, were not up to evil shit. It's, it's a, it's structure. We're oh, only at the top yeah. level. So, and the outer layer, they're not sacrificing people and doing shit. It's just, um, <laughs> That's an amazing documentary, man. If people haven't seen it, because it's 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 creepy, like you said, it's made by ex cult members who still haven't deprogrammed. Some of them has passed away, and by the way, they still exist today. They have a multi multi million dollar animal rescue facility oh, that's out here right, in, they in do. Utah called Best I've, Friends Animal Society. Yeah, and I have heard you. people promote that nonprofit because I I may not know if you know this about me, Doug. I'm a the ex, Leah Remini in the ex-Scientology community has Best Friends as one of their donors for fuck's sake. It shows you how clueless the ex-community in general is about this stuff. I am very, because I don't know if you know this about me, Doug. I rescue dogs in India when I'm there too. Oh, My really? dog is from India. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, oh, vegetarian. Nice. You got a dog? huge. Yeah, Ravi, I'm a huge animal lover. Me too, man. Um, and so I'm very weary of, of, I try to investigate some of these, you know, at first I didn't, at first you take people at face value, but then when you learn about this shit, you start to kind of go, are you really a humane place for an animal or are you doing some dodgy stuff? And I will say, I have found some really great, I have a subscriber who rescues, they have a no kill shelter and they, they, her and her sister rescue dogs. They're awesome. Um, I put, I put, shared their link before. Um, but yeah, it's, it's scary when you start to realize like how, because you're right. I mean, most people, Doug, empathetic souled people, whether they're animal lovers or not, would never want to see an animal hurt. They don't want to see that. They don't, they would never even, you know, but these are psychopaths. And I know in these sacrificial rituals, they use children and they use animals because they especially are the process, by the way, you know, they were known for their German shepherds. And then when you get into the son of Sam, you know, you got the, the barking, the dog that made, you know, David Berkowitz do it. it they were massively into their German shepherds and their dogs. And I, do believe that they you definitely like sacrificed the dogs. Almost, okay, Angie, as part of their philosophy. You're watching a few years ago, she spoke. I'm going to have to call Angie right out. I just had 
she witnessed something when she was a teenager with a German shepherd and she's been haunted by it since my friend, Angie, the fickle chickle, you guys know her. She comes on the channel a lot. She lives in Athens, Georgia. And we did a show and she talked about this memory and she's scared. The dog was sacrificed and it was very strange. They were using this like campground where they, a community center in Georgia and her and her friend had like snuck out as teenagers. Um, Angie is around your age. She's she just turned 50. So um, that Generation X like leap, sneak out of the house and go hang out with your boyfriends. I'm going to have to go back and find that episode and see what now that it might have been the process that she found. I'm going to I'm going to text her after this, because when you said German Shepherd, it just like that. Mem OK, anyway, we might have to do a round two with her on this because she actually that has haunted her. I don't want to speak for her, but what I remember from our conversation now that she has woken up now that she is like us sees everything as it is, um, has reflected back on that memory. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people do that. They reflect back. Yes. Uh, on things. A, yeah. yeah. I it, know what you're talking about, Bryce. It's like, I can tell you from personal experience, it's like I was two different people or it was, a, it's like, especially with the distance that I have from it now, so many memories because they reframe my reality completely in this call. Absolutely. Cult. So when I, you wake up, you go back and revisit memories and you see them for what they are. And they're often trauma memories. So they have been walled off from your memory. As long as you're in the cult, these things came rushing back in one shot for me. So yeah, there was memory after memory, dreams after dreams, nightmares after nightmares of my subconscious trying to let me feel and remember what actually happened you. Like, so that I could crazy. heal. Yeah. yeah. And I felt like I was going crazy, Bryce, because the stuff that comes up and finding out the darkness of Scientology versus what I thought I was in and my family and everything else. It was fucking shocking, man. It was like the exact opposite of what I thought I was living for most of my life. I get that. I absolutely, I will, I think I've told this story before on the channel, but I'll tell it again. Cause you know, Doug, I lived in LA for a really long time after college. Oh, really? And I ended up at, and I won't say the guy's name. So I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. You know, I was in my mid twenties. Um, the guy I was dating was 15 years older than me. I always end up dating older and he was in the music industry and we got invited to this party in the Hollywood Hills, kind of where, where you live where the Laurel Canyon area is. And um, the guys had, this was a, a very famous illustrator cartoonist. So if I said his name or the show that he created, everyone would know who he is. So I'm not going to say it. It was a beautiful. We were in his guest house, which was bigger than any other house I'd ever been in. And it was like a Tuesday night. Now, L.A. is a different breed in itself. You know, it's an entertain. It's it's not it's not like any other normal American town. So Tuesday nights to have a party, not that weird. So I get there and I notice the first thing I notice is that there are young children there, like eight, nine, ten years old. And that's alarming to me. I'm like 25 at the time. And I remember trying to justify it in my head. I remember thinking, well, it's L.A., their parents are probably here. It's just a different, because when I was a kid, if I was eight, nine, 10 years old, and it was a Tuesday night and my parents had to go to a work party, we would have had a babysitter and had a bedtime. So I'm trying to justify it. And, and it was so odd to me and out of place to see these young children at this party that I started to create justifications for it. When obviously that was a red flag. All, now, I didn't see anything happen. I saw nothing inappropriate happening at this party. So I just want to make that clear. It could have literally been their parents were there and couldn't find a babysitter. It could have literally been that. But then when I started learning about the child trafficking and the pedophilia in Hol Hollywood and all this stuff, after I had left L.A., I went right back to that memory. And my I wanted to cry. Like, And I thought, like, oh, my God, I could have done something. I could have called the cops. Well, no, could I have? Because the cops might be involved. Like, as an adult, and then I had to go through that process of like, no, you were you were twenty five. Like, you, what did you know? Like, you were kind of still young yourself, you know. And it just gives you this this. And again, I, I don't know. He, it could have been very innocent. It could have been very innocent. But learning what we know about all of these these groups, it just you rethink stuff. You start to revisit your yeah. initial red flags like you initially knew evil entered your home you initially yes. knew that and you go back to that and you're like i knew like my gut my spidey senses my intuition 
was was telling me something was wrong. And my friend Tamara, who I'm going to set, you guys all love Tamara on this channel, but Doug's going to, I'm going to set her up with Doug. Um, she always says, she she really pushes people to listen to their gut, listen to your gut, listen to your gut. And the, the thing that she says I love the most, people go, well, how do I know it's my gut? And she goes, this is very simple. Fear makes sense. When you have a, a fear response, it makes sense. Gut wow. response, don't. They don't make sense, right? Like, you know, dad Dad came home after doing a an event. I feel like it's evil, but, you know, then you can talk yourself out of it because yeah, there, which it, we always do, right? There's no logic. Like, it, it's not the logical world, right? It's it's the world of intuition, of, of spirituality. And, um, you know, and that's what I love about tomorrow. You guys know she does all these like events for people. And she says people will call her after the event to ask her questions, guidance. She goes, I don't know. What does your gut say? I don't know. What are you? What does your gut say? You know, um, and that's we need more people like that because if more people are like that, then cults like Scientology wouldn't exist, right? They wouldn't because people would be claiming that knowing, that inner knowing of something isn't right. And so, yeah, totally, man. The only, the only problem I had is my gut was telling me what what the situation was, but I was born into this shit, yes. man. There was like no way out. So to go right. against. That's why I had to form, I think, a sociopathic esque personality to defend myself because it was like walking on eggshells with my parents. If I don't take to this new thing that dad brought home that I don't understand yet, but it's all encompassing, I had to figure out a way, I guess, subconsciously because I wasn't thinking about this. I was the black sheep. I thought I was evil for not going along with it or whatever. But to follow my intuition would have meant I got to get away from the very people that I'm supposed to are supposed to protect you the most. My parents aren't sane. Yeah. And what am I going to do? Like at 10 years old, just go homeless. I mean, that's what I would have done if I really followed my intuition through, but you can't do that. So it's like being trapped in a house where I'd have to dodge around Scientology or surviving you, you're surviving sur and, you and, have and, to and, and it also tuned me in though with my parents anticipating anybody that grows up in a narcissistic family dynamic will know you kind of have to anticipate yeah. and feel the emotions of your abuser you're 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 picking up and i know this is funny because till swan's a cult leader too but she did say something true they, they guys cult leaders always have there's always truth in there that's how they get you in um she, and I, think true. I, I might have said this i might have said this off camera i can't remember if I, or on camera to you or if they've said it to you because it was such so like a lightning bolt moment children are adults that are prone to narcissist it's because they grew up in a dysregulated house mm -hmm. and that has nothing to do with how wealthy your parents were or anything like that when you have a parent who's dysregulated meaning they're a narcissist or maybe they're just an out there maybe it's not even that maybe they just are, are emotionally a little bit unstable as a child your survival is dependent upon your guardians like you can't go out work you can't build you don't know how to cook like you're your child right for part mm -hmm. of your childhood you can't even wipe yourself after you go to the bathroom right you're totally dependent on these people mm -hmm. so you're you're you to hone, hone in on the dysregulated person because your job in order to protect yourself is to keep them happy yeah it's a survival now what happens is when we grow up and we don't realize it's all subconscious mm -hmm. is that we go to a party let's say a party as an adult and there's a person in the room that we pick up on is dysregulated now a person who grew up in a regulated home We'll see that dysregulated person be like, fuck them. They're weird and exactly. not paying attention. But not the person who no. hasn't. No, they hone in. They, they will have found their soulmate. Yes, and they coddle that person and they want to fix Fucking that a, person. Man. It, and when I heard Till Swan say that a light bulb, she was right. Because I I grew up in a dysregulated home. you know. And I think H.G. Tudor kind of said something like that, where he talked about the empathetic parent versus the non. Like if a child grows up with empathetic parents, they're going to feel secure as an adult. It doesn't matter how much money they have. It doesn't matter if the parent is empathetic, the, the child feels safe and loved and protected. But if they're not, I think that's why you have so many rich kids who are completely lost because they yeah. did not grow up. They grew up with dysregulated parents, you know? And so it's, it's just very interesting to see how these patterns get set. And I love how HG Tudor I've never seen somebody die, like put basically like three main categories, empaths, normals, and narcissistics. And he has subcategories too, but I've never thought about that. So you can have a household where you're the only empathetic child. So your siblings don't pick up on the fact that 
mom or dad is dysregulated. It's only you that picks up on that. And so they have, nor- it, it's, and so they, they look for those people though. It, your empathy, and I love HD Tutor did say, and I love this, stop saying you're grateful for the narcissist. Yes. There's nothing yes. wrong with you. You're the you're the empath. You have you you are attuned to other people. Stop saying you're thankful for the narcissist for teaching you these things. You are the when he said that, Doug, I was driving home listening Man, to him. Man, he with said him. that during the interview, and I'm like, holy shit, bro. I never thought of that. Wow. He just cuts right through the chase on some yes. of these things. And, and how times. empathetic of it is it of us to go, thank you, narcissist, for that's the empathy coming out. Like, thank you for I know. That. You know, and it's it's so when you look at the structure, when you when you when you understand or at least have somewhat of understanding of these psychological imbalances and you step back, which is what you did. Trying. Yeah. You it's never going it. process. You huh? see it, like you see yeah. the way that people like you see it in the whole world, right? Like the whole in our government, you know, in politics. And literally, it also made a hell of a lot of sense of myself and the world and why I felt the way that I did. And that I wasn't crazy. I did have a heart. I realized when I got into Scientology, it was, um, that was just what was done to me. I was fine all along, man. Uh, but you know, I was born into an environment where I was dysregulated and, um, all I knew was to survive, but particularly coming across HGs. I'd studied a bunch of books on psychopathy, snakes and suits, the sociopath next door, all the standard shit. Yeah. But there was something about the way he penetrated when I first, I could tell he was a narcissist and he was speaking truth and he kind of gives it to you straight. I don't believe everything he says or anyone. I mean, we're not going to agree with everybody on anything right, anyways, right. but the basic stuff and the way he presents it, man, that was really a light bulb moment that Allow me to connect a lot of dots about my own life. And then also another thing he says, which I think is totally true. If my life is anything to go by, you probably would agree, Bryce. You're always going to be a magnet for these people. So yeah. you're never going to be able to get away from them. And as soon as you interact with one, <laughs> they'll come around five years later after you haven't talked to them. They they're, they see you as their property. You're ever yeah. connected to them according to them. That's why you can never leave Scientology. It's like the Hotel California. Yep. You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave, right? Well, according to them, you really can't. Because my parents, for example, my dad just recently passed in March of this year, but my mom's okay. still alive. But when my dad was alive, they were always leaving the door open for me to get my ethics in, which they call it in Scientology. The only reason you leave Scientology is because you've done something against the organization or you have secrets. So my parents, all these years later, after I'm speaking out, they know, you know, they, we don't talk and they know how upset I am about Scientology. I've been begging to talk to them about it from their perspective. I'm wrong. And they always leave the door open. It's never their fault. There's nothing to look at. And we're just waiting for you to get your ethics in son, to come back to Scientology. Whenever you're ready, we'll be here. So in other words, there's no getting through to people like that it's just um and then another and then another point is like hg said you'll always his kind will always he said it's like radar like he's yeah. a self-aware narcissist but narcissists in general i think he, you know he said subconsciously they know who in the room has the juice the right. empathy the life force that they're going to feed off of not the normals yeah. not the other narcissists yeah. he says he hones in on these people he can sniff them out that's and therefore the- you're always going to be a target and he says as long as you know about it, you can defend yourself. He says, once you know, you go. So I don't fuck around once I have somebody sussed as that. You have to get somebody. I don't want to push everybody away. I'm pretty open. So you have to get to know somebody. But once I figure out that they might have an agenda or if they are a narcissist after X amount of weeks or months, like hanging out with them and the red flags kick in, it's, it happens all the time. At least I can get out of there much faster and I can see what's going on where as many times I'd be dragged into these situations um, pleading and begging and oh i'm so thankful when i was just react reenacting the same abuse that i had in the family and the cult just with my partners and shit you know but the chicks oh, i date stuff, yeah it's i'm the same way i have been a, a tra- i have attracted narcissists since and it took me in trauma therapy going back to my childhood to understand i was born i was i feel like i was born into a narcissistic system um and, and not just my family but it was just all around me and I started to reflect back on why I always felt uncomfortable around certain adults in my life. Um, that, and I, I love that once you know, you go. And you're correct. You have, and I hope people, because the law of one 
very much validates what you just said. When you are an empath or a wanderer, whatever you want, a sixth grade soul, whatever vocabulary word you want to use to describe that, you give off an energy that is delicious. Your prime rib. I mean, I'm not, I don't eat meat. So is that, is that the fanciest steak there is? I don't know. Is it prime rib? Is I don't that- know. I'm no food connoisseur. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're Ruth Chris. Like you're not McDonald's. Like you are, you are the juiciest of juicy of energy that they can feed off of. If you have, you have light beings and light, light eaters. And a lot of people I think make that mistake, Doug, is once they go through therapy, they think that they will never attract another narcissist again. And that's just simply not, it's the essence of who you are. And so, and my boyfriend is the same way. He went through a lot of narcissism and he went through and he now, even with his job, if he picks up on somebody right away as being a narcissist, he keeps them at arm's length. He doesn't, or he, he, uh, he try. I was going to try I was going to talk about a scenario, but I decided not to, because I don't want to dox anybody, but he will definitely go out of his way to like be what they call gray rocking. Like just be very short not giving anything to this person. And, and that is, I, I I just hope people hear that there is nothing wrong with you. Like you are an incredible soul. That is why they are attracted to you. Like that is not, which is weird, Bryce. Cause you know, there's also in this community an arrogance of, Ooh, I'm an empath and this and that. I just feel fucking normal, man. So when people like when talking with HG so fascinating because it's like, um, I don't feel special or any of that. I just feel like me and I feel normal and I always have been me. It's just for, I had to learn the hard way that, you know, there's a bit, there's a lot of naivety in me, you know, it's why I think that I got sucked into Scientology when maybe I could have avoided it because um, I just didn't think that people had those intentions and could be evil. Like it still blows my mind. Like I'm not trying to control anybody. I never really was, even when I was in Scientology, maybe I was trying to control my life, you know, using the tech or whatever, but I just feel normal. And the fact that there's people out there that would want anything from me, um, when HD talks about, you know, the loosh that they get and then and the yep. feeding off of the energy, that's so disgusting to me. I don't want to control anybody or feed off anybody. I'm as normal as they come. And yet somehow in this world, you're always going to have these freaks, um, you know, seeing you as something that you don't even see yourself as. And yet they just fucking, they won't, they're like the Terminator. They won't stop. I always have situations, um, Bryce, of just fucking, I trust people, man. They come into my life. I find out three months later, they have some angle or agenda, which is the biggest like turnoff for me. I can't stand people that uh, suck up to you. And then they, you find out they have some kind of, agenda rather than just being friends or like a a legitimate you know um non-agenda fucking friendship so it's just i'm constantly being burned i feel like i can get out of them a lot quicker but you know i don't want to push everybody away sometimes i can't make a snack judgment about a person right away because they're sneaky and they put on a facade and then months later i'll find out what it was all about all along and i'm like fuck man not you like it it makes Uh, you kind of sketchy on who you can actually fucking trust and you get, there's the covert narcissist. Those are the hardest to pen. Yeah. You get those. And if you're in a romantic relationship versus a friendship, they're different dynamics. Yeah. Uh, or the victim yeah. narcissist where they're not grandiose and you feel sorry for them and you want to help them. And they play that card so well, you know, you, yeah. they play on the, your, you want to help. Yeah. You know? It's, it's in a mirror. You, it, it's, I totally get it. I, I think a lot of my viewers also, we talk a lot about narcissism because it is such and you're in the heart. I mean, you're, I mean, I think they're everywhere, but being in LA, like you're kind of surrounded too, because, you know, it's just the nature of the beast in a lot of ways, you know, like literally. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's not a surprise to your listeners. They've heard that, you know, Hollywood comes from the, the Holly tree, you know, and that's Wand, what they made yeah. the little magic wands out of to hypnotize the minds, of the populace. That's what Hollywood is, man. And that's why it's been so hard to go back, Brie, after quote, waking up. Yeah. Yeah, because it's. I thought I was genuinely servicing art, and I believed in you know, I just loved doing it. Right. But what you have to do to play the game in Hollywood to be real famous, I think you can not be a mind controlled slave and maybe be a a lower lesser actor or musician. But people like you know Britney Spears, The Hames, River Phoenix, if you're gonna achieve like real stardom in, in Hollywood, I think that it's um. 
it's they're looking for trauma based mind control people. Oh, That's absolutely. why a lot of them come from cults. Yeah. They dissociate easy. Yep. They can have good imaginations that can also, like you said, you know, it could be used for dark or light, like dissociative states don't have to be bad. If you are in control of it yourself, it's just, they use the, whoever the fuck these, they are, they definitely understand how the mind and trauma works. So, so much of Hollywood is built on finding people that are growing up in broken homes that can be easy to control, that can dissociate easily so they can actually be good actors and have be good musicians and tap into those disassociative states. Right. But at the same time, you know, um, if you, you know, people have no idea in general. I mean, people ask me, hey, man, how do I, can you help me get an agent, man? Can you hook me up in this and that? I'm like, motherfucker, trust me, man. Don't want this. Not want to. Like, I, I mean, I, I miss acting. I love it, but people don't know what they're getting into. If they innocently think that it's based on talent and how hard you work, it's a, um, it is a fucking beast cult, satanic, uh, cult Hollywood. In yeah. A nutshell. It's sad. Cause I, I love performance art and I think, yeah. that, you know, <laughs> we look at like the meth, the Stanislavski's method or whatever. It's this, it's the truth telling that's attractive. It's the connection. Everybody, it's why we say we still study Shakespeare because everybody knows about jealousy and betrayal. Mm -hmm. These are real raw human emotions. You know, I, uh, we talked about we were Phoenix with a stand by me and we, we, we rewatched that the other night and there's that's awesome. there. There's truth in those those children's stories. And so you're right, it can be used. People can go there and want and want to be a performance artist in order to to connect with humanity, in order to create. That's what a visual artist does too. It's what a creative writer does. It's that connection to hu the humanity of us all. And then to for these these dark players to take that, manipulate that is such a sad state for planet earth because no shit because art's really important man and it sucks that they that's been hijacked too i mean that's a powerful way to transfer transform people's consciousness man and if you've got hollywood and the arts under your pocket with evil fucks it's just sucks how what the fuck Bri uh, bryce i mean what like i'm still blown away by this world like what's the point of it all man i mean we could have such a better world this shit show we're, we're in um yeah i, I mean think, well, the law art should be it. released from these criminals that you know um in hollywood like there's it seems like wherever anything good is it's already been hijacked and used for everything, evil and it's like where the fuck are the good guys there's only a small got, handful of psychopaths we've got no anyways. real food we've got no i mean there's we're it's, it's, it's crazy we're and i know that like people who want to be artists who want to connect with other human beings and create music you know they're they are considered to be of service to sell or service to other people so they're considered of the light they want to service other people they want to connect with other humans and the fact that that can be taken and manipulated for these service to self assholes well i mean the law of one says it's getting really bad now because we're coming towards the end of the timeline and so both fractions yeah. of good and light and this polarity are like at odds. That's why you and I get censored. That's why a lot of our friends watching have been kicked off of Facebook. It's because mm -hmm. we're coming up. And the only, I mean, the only shitty thing is we don't have the billions of dollars that. And the, the organization too. Another way that it works, like let's take Scientology as a microcosm of the macrocosm. Think about yeah. it. Like that's a well-oiled machine that knows what it's want, has it's a long-term plan to control, right? And then you got the populace or the cult members in this, in this example, or the ex-Scientology community. We can't even get along with each other. We're certainly not organized and we're, you know, we're individuals too. So maybe we shouldn't form another cult. And, and you know, but, but what I'm saying is I think the advantage that the Hubbards of the world and the controllers have is be, being a psychopath, they don't have empathy so they can do things that are out of the range of the normal person's perspective. So that keeps them hidden to a certain degree. And they're also planners extremely well organized they have a hundred year plan man like hubbard pulled off something that is actually kind of amazing that you you and i would never even want to do let no. alone pull yeah, off. My mind. yeah yeah so that's that's the thing where i wonder about like how to tackle this shit like how the hell are we going to organize against and then if we do organize are we going to form a cult again but i think the advantage that they have is just they they have a goal and they have yeah. the money and the power and they know what they want and we're scrambling around we can't 
We fight over our political leaders. We fight over the bread and circuses that are fed to us on such a level where we're so easy to distract. How the fuck are us. we going to organize against yeah. this shit? Well, and but I it think, would be easy to defeat because it's really just a handful of assholes. That's one percent of the population compared to the compared to most people, which I do believe are. This is going to sound like a Scientology line, so I'm not in Scientology anymore, even slightly. But one of the things he said, which I'm sure is an original, but I do think that people are generally good, man. They're not psychopaths. Maybe I mean, they're just not psychopaths. It's a it's a smaller percentage, and those are the only ones that that. that that's another thing that HG says, which I agree with, is that you obviously can't be an empathic or a normal person and form a cult or do what the global elite does or whatever you want to call them. You have to be a conscienceless person. And that's a small percentage. I mean, growing by the day because of the trauma that we're all born into that's increasing, but it's still so small. This would be defeatable because, um, you know, we were talking about earlier, well, just about Scientology and how this works. Like, how narcissists work, as soon as you see the dots, as soon as you know what you're dealing with, as soon as you can understand the scale of evil you're dealing with, that's it, man. I mean, the, their power is gone. It's only that the, you're under a spell, you're begging, you're trying to plead, you're trying to fix them. Once you realize what you're dealing with and you leave, they slither away and die because you're not, I don't even contact, yeah. you just block them, whatever. As soon as they're out of your life, they slither away and die. So all we'd have to do is simply know what we're dealing with and wake up and there's nothing to even do we just simply wouldn't buy into this shit we wouldn't lock down in our houses we wouldn't do all the stupid shit that these people hypnotize us to do yeah and you know the funny thing is is like i don't even know if if we're ever going to defeat because we're all i think i think what's happening now this is just and this just take this with a grain of salt guys make your own opinions <laughs> If I'm looking at what the law of one tells us and using that as a template, as we go into the, like this new age, it's almost going to be like a splitting where mm -hmm. we're just setting where we are. I am. I, yeah. am, I want to be service to others. I'm going to keep speaking out because I want to help other people. And that's going to set me up and you guys watching up into going a more positive timeline because the people who are the narcissists are the psychopaths. They want to be that way. They're mm -hmm. desiring that way. So they're trying to go the negative. Now you have people in the gray. And the law of one says being neutral means you're going to go negative. Right? You Those are the people that I feel you make so many good points just in that one thing, Bryce. Like, I don't feel like I need to save anyone, man. Just save yourself, no. right? It's just not like we're going to play God about... and wake everybody no. up. It's a foolish right. goal anyways. But like you said, those people in the middle are kind of the playground where yeah. I feel like you got the 5% Empaths over here, and then you got the five percent psychopaths that have all the mind control, the money, the that they own the media, etc. And we're both battling. The empaths are the, trying to say, "Wake middle. up!" To the people in the middle, you're being scammed on a massive level. And the psychopaths are creating things like Q and all these other things to get people Rats. where the empaths are screaming, like, "Just look at what this." And then they're, you know, so in other words, the battle is for the fucking people. It seems like, you know, if, if they Middle. could just. And it's up to them. I mean, like, look at, look, I mean, guys, I know, I know I'm speaking, I'm preaching to the choir of everyone who watches me. Y'all, they were giving away Dunkin' Donuts for <laughs> a freaking vaccine. That's one of a thousand lunacies that I'm watching over the last three years <laughs> going, you've got to be fucking shitting me that people can't see what the hell is going on. Br Bryce, if you can't laugh at some of this shit, you can go crazy. It is I got so many battles and arguments with my friends, again, trying to wake them up. It's pointless, man. You know, I, it, it's so ludicrous. If you can't suss it by now, fuck There's, you. I don't know. Because <laughs> yeah, they're like, the ones that are making us that can see go along with this shit. So sooner so or later, it's got to come to a head. Either you wake up or you die. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. Well, it might have been Krispy Kreme, guys. So if it wasn't Dunkin' Donuts, I apologize. But I'm sure they offered the whole menu, Bryce, because I saw all the little incentives. It was so pathetic and so childish. I'm and then if you challenge anybody on that, they get on their little high horse. And what an opportunity for people to virtue signal and go, I'm protected against the vaccine. I'm on booster seven. Why aren't you? Well, motherfucker, if it works, just... worry about yourself. It's so illogical. It was stupid. It's it's like and and it's like okay oh no Krispy Kreme cares that's why 
in what world has they have they ever donated donuts like this are you are you fucking kidding? not only that bryce i was in good shape i went to the gym which they closed down natural sunlight like yes. i've never yeah. been more traumatized and I couldn't, you know, go throw the weights around for like, and then I'm supposed to eat Krispy Kreme and and take an experimental death shot. So yeah, that's re I'm sure that um, the governments have only our health and our good intentions on their mind when they have nothing but a track record all throughout history of doing nothing but fucking people up and controlling them. So at what point do people get the message? Uh, you know, a, a part of me, and this is going to sound bad, Br Bryce, but I'm sure you know what I'm saying. Like, they're just doing their job. A part of me, this needs to come to a head. You can only remain a child and not grow. I mean, a lot of people are adults, but they, they're just children like, like, you know, me and stuff. I, I feel like I'm not talking out of line because I spoke from personal experience. I was a fucking baby man. And I had a, a cult in the family and, you know, political leader. There's always somebody else that I could put responsibility on. Right. But finally, when you grow the fuck up and you take your mind and your power back and you can see through some of this shit. These global elite that are killing people with these um, VACCINES, if people can't be bothered to do the research and find out what's going on, and they're going to keep believing these psychopaths, and they're going to virtue signal and shoot down the people that can see beyond this, then then fuck them. You know, sooner yeah. or later they they're going to meet the consequences of going to sleep and depending on nut jobs and virtue signaling because those are the people that they're depending on to bring in the new world order none of this shit yeah. can happen if people could see through the lies so you uh, and i, you know, I got so angry you and i are their worst enemies they hate us because we see them and that's why they shut us down that's why they shadow ban not us just the psychopaths but your normie friends yes. that get pissed at you because you're not on booster seven you know, yes. fuck, fuck those people, because those are the ones that made the lockdown and everything possible were those right. of us who could see through it. We didn't need to give up our businesses and we didn't need to, you know, psychologically torture our kids by fucking oh, up their yeah, whole reality, the putting it, making it so they can't breathe. Like, fuck these people that went along with it, man. Seriously. That is the word. Sooner or later, I... you have to get you have to wake up or you're going to get the consequences. The children with the, the rash. Yeah. Face. And parents going yeah. along with this. Yeah. Fucking like I, I'm so grateful that my sister was financially able to pull her children from public school and put them into a private school so they wouldn't have to wear masks. Yeah. Because good for the, some like, responsible parents that didn't. Yeah. And she would have along with this. With that because she, there was no way that her kids were going to be wearing a mask all day. Yeah. I, it's and, insane. Like you can't breathe in those things. Like it's, not only that, it doesn't. If you believe in this virus, it does nothing to stop the virus. It's all pseudoscience that we were sold by Fauci and these assholes. And like I said, if people can't be bothered to find out the truth, some of which is even on the CDC's own website about is. how much a were fucking you, scam this thing was, then you fuck you, you man. That, take as many shots as you like, man. Amen. Every day we got on that website to see what the CDC had to say, and it never matched what they were saying on the news. It never yeah. matched. And um, yeah, it 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 just I I I can't even. We forced this video to bit shoot already, haven't we? Oh, I know it's going it's going to rumble. I'm going to do an advertisement on on YouTube. It's totally fine. That's another red flag. Why can't, even if we're wrong? Why can't we talk out against the alternative? They say that misinformation is anything that's not coming from government approved narratives. That's what they label misinformation. In other words, if you have questions about the vaccine or what happened in the last three years. You're a conspiracy theorist and you're spreading misinformation. Well, who the fuck says that, you know, it's just like what the psychopath does, right, Brie? Bryce, yeah. I don't know why the fuck I keep okay. calling you Brie. Okay. They project what they're yeah. doing and saying you're doing. They it's are doing. They we're, are spreading misinformation. Yeah. We're living in a brave new world, guys. <laughs> hey, we knew it was coming, man. We knew it was coming. Exactly. Here we are. They don't want any. Oh, I I re I, re I watched that series that they just released the mini series on a brave new world. Like oh, the, the new fact one. Fact that they're not even you know, and, and I'm I'm like you know, you do you, Bill. As long as you're not hurting anyone, <laughs> if you're like not monogamous, if you're polyamorous, all that kind of stuff, that's cool if that's what you like. But I'm I'm the monogamous. Like there is value in having like the traditional family and ha well, I mm -hmm. mean, having two loving parents. I also support gay rights. You know, as mm -hmm. long as me too. You're a loving family. And you're stable, but in that brave new world, they like show them like boinking everyone. And if if, yeah. if you boink one person for too long, the government comes in and says you. So it's like, and we see this happening. Like they're trying to like, I, I'm horrified. I want to make that very very clear. If you are an adult, if you are a full fledged adult, and you want to change your biology, 
Go right ahead if that's what makes you happy. I, you do you, boo. You, you have the right to pursue happiness in this country, and if that's what you want to do, fantastic. But children, yeah, having them so confused and chopping their breasts off and their their like, are you kidding me? Like this is this is so disgusting. And watch, and if you go back and read the book or watch, even watch the mini series they created, you see everything and they keep giving them these pills to suppress mm-hmm. their actual Soma. emotions yes yeah. it's unbelievable it is unbelievable and the fact that you know what makes me so mad is the fact that and i i because we are on rumble right now saying this as a white person uh, doug i think you can probably attest this as a white person as well the fact that i now have to apologize for being white yeah that's yeah. racism that is racism I've never owned a human being. I've never, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's, you guys know what we're saying. It's, I cannot believe that more people don't see this. I cannot believe it. It is so I think part of that, Bryce, is because have you noticed in the last three years um, how we're being hit from every angle where the agenda, you know, even trans people themselves were say, were say that their thing's been hijacked. Yes. And that you shouldn't be filling six year olds' brains with, them questioning their sexuality before their fucking brain is formed so there's that agenda and then there's the you know you got the black lives matter now you have to hate white people um we're being hit from so many and then climate change yep it's all one cult it's all one thing being orchestrated by the same people so it's not i think what's happening is that we're experiencing trauma-based mind control on a global scale, which is what we were talking about in the 60s was planned to happen. And that Brave New World and Aldous Huxley's book and 1984, they're nonfiction. I mean, they're telling you basically what's going to happen. So it's not a surprise. I think that it's two things. To come to terms with the scale of evil and to take personal responsibility is hard to do. I didn't want to fucking do it. I told you I got forced into it. It almost killed me anyway. So it's hard to actually stand in your own power. It's fucking hard. The second thing is, you, it's hard to connect the dots too. It can look like we're everything's random. So you move from one catastrophe to the next. You know, most people don't remember what happened a week ago and you can't, as soon as you can connect the dots and realize it's an agenda coming from one cult, one group of people, whoever people say that is, and that it's planned. And you don't have to look beyond the World Economic Forum and shit, you know, to see what, you know, what the plans are if you don't want to go too down the rabbit hole. But it's that, right, Brie? It's, it's the trauma of having to um, realize the scale of evil that's actually happening to come to terms with that. And then you have to make a fundamental change and stop being a fucking baby. And you have to actually grow up and stop bitching and whining and falling for all the psyops. And then it's being able to connect all the psyops and see that it did, it's not an accident that, especially in the last three years, that the predator has entered the world stage for everybody to see and that there's a coordinated attack on everything from climate change to sexuality and stuff because that was in the books that we were told about in brave new world for example about how this is going to happen and here we are and people still say it's a conspiracy theorist they're fucking cackling at us man they they yeah. they, oh, they, they this information while they get together at the little world economic forum and they say you know did you see event 201 where they ran a test of the coronavirus you know seven months before they actually rolled it out did you see that video I mean, oh, I've seen so many from from those. There's a ton, right? But I'm just saying, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that there's a fucking plan. Yes. And if you can connect the dots, you can calm down in life because you don't have to be worried and thrown off by every little thing that happens. You can um, be outside of it, you know, and see it. And then all of a sudden you stop being so afraid. I mean, it makes you pissed off and you want to do something about it. But you certainly don't fear that the world's going to. No, you know, overheat tomorrow and all this bullshit that they're feeding us. No, you know? absolutely not. And I will say the reason why they tell us what they're going to do before they do it is because they have to have our consent to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. So when you stop giving consent, they can't do it anymore. So stop. But you can't not give consent if you don't know you're under a spell. It's exactly. just like in Scientology. Exactly. I had to give my consent, but I was hypnotized to do that. Right. Once the spell broke, you can take your Revoked consent. Yeah, that's why I yeah. do have some sympathy, Bryce, because I was under this fucking shit, man. Oh, absolutely. You don't ha- I didn't have informed consent that I was being hypnotized. It's illegal what Scientology is doing. You'd have to actually open hypnosis clinics to do legally. So you don't know what the fuck you're getting involved in. You oh. trust your officials. You trust yes. your teachers because they're not trying to bullshit anybody. They're just teaching the state's version of everything. It comes from on high. So 
Not everybody's in on a secret and bullshitting each other. We fucking believe it because we're hypnotized to believe it. Once you break up out of the spell, it becomes infuriating. I feel it becomes, so, I you go, feel why like can't everybody see it? My you know? heart goes out to anybody who's been, because we've all been there. We've all been mind controlled. We've all had cognitive dissonance. Yeah. We've all had that. So my, it's not the people. I want to make that very clear. Even though the people in a cult can do bad things to serve the cult, they themselves are not bad people. Not necessarily, right? yeah. Not necessarily. Generally speaking, most people are just doing what they think is right and they're trying to survive. I agree with that. Trying to. And so my, my heart, so if there are by chance any Scientologist or any cult members who are kind of skating the ground, um, the world outside of your cult, we support you. We want to help you. We know, we understand. That's why Doug does what he does. That's what I yeah. do my dives you're not you're not a bad you might have done bad things but that doesn't mean you are inherently a bad person and yeah. healing can happen and there is there there is a group of there are people that can help you so that's a we, great message man thanks for saying I, I that want, i mean i say that to the people coming out of the christian church too it's 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 our political extreme groups like i mean my friend kelly from nexium she said once it's so embarrassing when you realize you've fallen for this but i want to say as a person who's been never never in like a big cult i have been in narcissistic relationships i have had toxic belief systems that is in my mind that is makes me no different than you like i've been duped as well and and i can't judge not least you be judged although that's an overused yeah. verse from the bible i do believe that are good no oh but by the grace of god go i like i can't judge Yet he I, cast the first stone who has no sin or some yes. shit yeah. yeah i i we are doing this together and we came to this earth to experience friction we didn't come to this earth to sit around and eat popcorn and watch the kardashians as much as they some want. people did but but uh, yeah <laughs> you know so and and that is um and and I'm so grateful for everybody who is willing to speak out because I think I think what that does I know the Scientology community especially gets a lot of neverence but I think that mm -hmm. is that human connection that people recognize these patterns within their own lives it's yeah. so they're able to self reflect and understand oh that was toxic or that was and I'm not alone like I'm not the I'm not the idiot the only idiot that fell for this like everybody's fallen we're, we're all figuring this we're all coming out of the haze together you know and so um so i really want people to know that you're not going to be judged at least by us like you're not you know there are people to listen to your story there are people that are going to give you a hug and and not judge you and just listen and um and so yeah we're all human beings man we're all well okay, most man. of us are <laughs> so yeah i know uh, and I am Doug. What I'm going to do when I get off, I'm going to send you uh, the last episode I did with Tamara. I'm just going to text. Awesome. It. Thank you. She reads the plan. She reads the whole agenda. It is powerful. She has it in a video, one video, or is she it a reads writing? It. Someone sent it to her. I'll, it's on my video. I have it. She read it on my. She read the whole thing on video. Oh, I'd on love to see that. I can send it to you. You can even cut that out if you want to put in your videos if you want to because it, it lays it out or hell really? tomorrow tomorrow you guys tomorrow wants to meet doug so maybe she, we can get Fucking uh, a. doug's channel thank you too, so thanks Bryce. i'd love to meet her man <laughs> of course we got a lot of cool people that i that i know i i think a lot of us people are really starting to like support each other because we know how hard it is to in your real life to like face off it is hard it takes a lot of courage to say no it takes a lot of courage to walk in that grocery store without a mask on yeah. By the way, I didn't go along with any of it. And I live here in Los Angeles where let's just say it was really challenging. I, re I refused to go along with any of it. So I would send in, I would go in without the mask and that didn't work. And then I finally just sent my friends in. I wanted to, um, I was so pissed off, Bryce. I just got out of a cult. I worked 10 years to deprogram. Boom, I'm finally going to go back into Hollywood. I figure I can slither in there where I can have a career, but I don't have to sell my soul. Maybe I don't, I don't think that's actually possible anymore, but at least I had a plan. I worked really hard to get my fucking brain back from Scientology. And I find myself right in a cult situation, everybody loving their fucking servitude, wearing the little face diapers. Sorry if I get upset, man, but this pandemic no, I, I, really pissed me off because, um, it's especially people that would come on to you for trying to tell, tell them and feed information what's going on. And they get so aggressive and lay into you yeah and they're the very idiots that are bringing in and servicing these psychopaths they they don't even know what the hell they're walking into and helping to build you know and it, and it's serious because we're talking about i mean i'm in my 50s man i'm how old am i i'm 50 
So I'm well more than halfway through. Um, this life has kind of sucked, to be honest with you, at least the first half, you know, the second half is better. It's just sucked. Yeah, I, I, so I'm, I don't, actually... I, I'm just saying like, if we don't do something about this, it's not like a hundred years off. It's like in the next 10 years or 15 years where we're oh, going to be, we're not going to be able to walk this thing back and we're going to so be leaving. Once, a... it's in, once the new world, order, new world order walks right in the front door. They're here, buddy. They're here. We're yeah. So yeah, and if we don't, Bryce, it's gonna. I just want to tell people if they don't have, know, it's gonna make what I went through and Scientologists went through. It's gonna make it look really like a Sunday school, like that. It's gonna yeah. suck, man. And and there's gonna be no way out. You know, if they and get the fucking chip in our ass and they connect us to AI and they, this is what they're planning on doing. Yeah. And you according know? to the if law, we let one... that happen. We're we're letting our kids. We're let. It's not going to be a world anyone's going to want to fucking incarnate into. I can guarantee you that. You no. Know? And according to the law of one and other forums, they will get to a point where they're going to be so in control that they're going to come out and tell you who they are. They it's already funny. are. They're bragging yeah. about it. They're yeah. fucking they're arrogant about it. They're us. laughing. It's true. And I actually. Bill, Bill Gates could barely keep that smirk off of his face when oh, he's, he's up so there. Disgusting. And people are. He, like, he's like evil incarnate. And people still think that that's a good man. Me. He, he, he's open that he doesn't vaccinate his own children. But Wake people up. can't put two and two together with Why just that one fact alone. Children? That's and a good I question. Doug, I just text you um, the agenda, the video. Oh, thank you. So you can listen and hear the whole thank thing. Thank you, Bryce. Um, and and um, I'm going to put you in touch. But when you get off, I'm going to text her and you right away. So you guys have thank a you very much. Because this is important. And um, and I know we're heading up to two hours now. So I'm going to really. Go Yes, Doug. I'm gonna ask you again. Will you come wow. back? Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Did we really do two hours? How how, how long did we go? Almost two hours. Even... We're almost really. Mark. Yes. I thought we were in for about an hour so far. Okay, that yeah, went by we're, really we're, really I think, fast. I, I think we're. I mean, when I get off, I'll know exactly when I download it. But um, yeah. I you guys, I please come back. You are such a crowd favorite. I think it's just so refreshing for people too in in this community of of awake people to find another person. Like it's always so refreshing yeah, to find mean. another person who is saying everything that you have thought every for our yes, I know what you don't mean. have don't have platforms. Everything they've thought, everything that they've. And I understand those people who don't have platforms where your job's at stake, where maybe your spouse and your marriage is on shaky ground because of it. I'm very lucky to have a partner that is completely awake. I don't know how you guys do it with partners who are not awake. Like that is very difficult. Um, so we get that. And um, yeah, so I know people just get so excited and just and seeing your perspective of 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 the satanism and the patterns with scientology and all these which other we barely even got into maybe we can hit on that in the next one yeah, yeah. we can talk more about the next one i am going to link you guys in the description box i know you're watching this on rumble but i am going to link the series to youtube of doug's uh, uh raised in a secret society series season one season two so you can go to his channel and watch all of I would I would suggest starting at the beginning of season the first episode of season one and going all the way through so that you have a really because you, you do a really good job of doing these separate episodes to really keep it organized for Thanks, people man. to understand. So I will put that link, guys. Make sure you subscribe to Doug and share his work. We're gonna be on Rumble, so it doesn't really matter. But Doug and I, I know I said, sorry about that, Bryce. I no, it's okay. I expected it. I expected it because we were gonna be talk talking about Satanism. And so, you know, I'm gonna put a little commercial up on YouTube to get people to go to Rumble. Um okay. but um also guys, make sure you are subscribed to both of our Rumbles and Doug's Bit Shoot so that you have the backup channels. Um so and also remember guys that for people like Doug and me. They will unsubscribe you to our channels. I get those emails mm -hmm. all the time that people have been unsubscribed. They will shadow ban us so our videos won't pop up on your feed. So just make sure that you are constantly checking the channel yourself, manually checking, because that's that's what they do to us. Because, I mean, in some ways, you know, you're on the right track when you get the strikes and when you get the shadow bans and when you get your sh channel shut down, you it's kind of confirmation that you're yeah, on. If it's not happening, you're doing something wrong. At least you, you chose you're over the target. If you're not being attacked, you're really not on the right path. I don't think at least in the times we're exactly. living in. Exactly. So help us. Out. So it, it's a catch 22. It sucks that we're shadow ban. It sucks. We get strikes, but we know why we're getting it. It's like, like HG says with narcissists, like when you know, you, you know what's going on. So make sure that you're sharing guys, share Doug's channel with your friends. Um, sh just share everything so that, that we can help beat this, 
this beast together. So there's more of us than them. So, all right, Doug, any parting words to our friends watching right now? Just thanks for having me on, Bryce. It's just a pleasure to talk to you. I'm glad I got to meet you. Just thanks for the contacts and just everything. Just thanks for being a cool person. Oh, same back at you. So, so, all right, guys. Well, again, I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. Make sure you're subscribed and may, may, may the battle continue. Yes. <laughs> so, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye, everybody.